Hello, everybody. Welcome to my new installment of Shauna Reacts. I am going to watch videos and react to these videos so you guys can see, not just hear my opinion, but see, see what I'm thinking, you know, or see what I'm doing with these videos. Okay, guys, it's new. I hope you enjoy it. If it's good and you enjoy it, I'll probably put this in the membership once I start a membership. So only you members will be able to watch Shauna Reacts. So anyways, guys, thank you for joining me this evening. I appreciate it so much. I hope y'all are having a great Labor Day weekend. I know I am relaxing and having a good time with my family. Oh, and an extra video tonight for you guys. So I had the time. But you all, I told you I was going to do a reaction video to um, the Geraldo Rivera show from the 90s that had Dee Stanley on it. Yep, the one that we all got mad at. So I'm sure you'll enjoy this reaction video because I've got a lot to say. It's 43 minutes long, so I hope I have your time. But anyways, guys, I just want you to know that my editor is on the case, on the job, and he is EP Fan Archive. I'm glad he finally came out and, and, and is, it, he's ready to tell the world. Um, that he's helping me, and I so appreciate it so much, EP Fan Archive. Thank you. Um, okay, guys, so I'm going to watch this reaction video, and here we go. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the program. You know, perhaps you've seen the Inquirer, or maybe you've heard its basic charge. The charge is outrageous. Let's get right to it. Now, joining us is Dee Presley, who was Elvis's stepmother, Elvis Presley's stepmother. She was married to Elvis's father, Vernon, for 17 years. Boy, she, she looked great right here, didn't she? the real truth about Elvis is so shocking, so unbelievable, that she had to wait until now to reveal what she alleges was the king's deepest, darkest, and final secret. So before I even introduce the people sitting alongside her, let me get right to... Dee Presley, Dee, what is the secret? The secret? The issue that we will be talking about today is the love between Gladys and Elvis. The incestuous love, that they were lovers. You allege that Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll, had a sexual mm -mm -mm. relationship with his own mother, Gladys. I know the truth. I was told by three closest to him. The three closest First, to him. I'm pausing it for right now. The three closest to him. I think it's really funny. These three people are dead and were long gone dead when she did this interview. So they really can't say yay or nay. Just throwing it out there. Now I'm going to push play again. By Albert Holman. She lived with the Presleys and took care of Gladys until she died and remained on at Graceland for a few years after I came there. My mother Presley, when I say mother Presley, Vernon Presley's mother, Elvis's grandmother, and last, Vernon Presley himself. You can see Geraldo's face is your, like, because he's an Elvis fan. Your husband, ex-husband, ex well, yes. he's passed away now. Yes, the that's the late Vernon husband. Presley, you allege Vernon even admitted it? Yes. It, this didn't happen instantly when I came to Graceland. It took a period of years and longer for Vernon to deal with it. Okay, you married Vernon in 1960. Yes. And you divorced Vernon shortly before Elvis himself died in No, 19... after, after. Oh, you, it, was, it was after, after the death. Elvis oh, I didn't know. Death. I thought yes. it was before um, the death. No, after. So you, but you were separated, weren't you, at the time yes, Elvis I, died? Yes, I was legally separated for at least three years. From Vernon? From Vernon, yes. Okay, now during the time that you were with Vernon, Legally you alleged, separated and for you years. know it sounds outrageous, the, uh, you know that people adore Elvis, uh, many, many people, despite the facts and circumstances surrounding his later years, yes. the drug abuse, etc. Uh, so you're saying, you, you know, it's almost like, uh, like spitting on an, ic an mm -hmm. icon, you know, yes. I don't want to uh, be judgmental about it, I want to be open-minded about it, and I want to lead us through, I want you to lead us through exactly, uh, how you came to be convinced it's like spitting on an icon. And his mom had an incestuous relationship. <laughs> First of all, uh, now, you and Vernon never had any children. No, I had a miscarriage. 
Okay. Now, when you became mm. pregnant, she claims this. No yes. proof, okay. guys. A year after your marriage to Vernon, uh, how did he respond to your pregnancy? Well, I had expected him to be happy to have a, a child. And of course, uh, he was not happy. He seemed to suspect that people would think that the child belonged to Elvis, which to me was unheard of at that time. I was not totally aware, but I knew there was some serious Wasn't problems. unheard of. I'm pausing it one more time. Do you guys remember the story that we've been telling you guys from Child Bride and what Priscilla accounts of how Elvis felt about Dee? He couldn't stand her. But the story starts how Dee contacted Elvis to invite him to dinner because she wanted Elvis first. And he was vulnerable because his mother just died. But what's crazy about it is Elvis didn't want to go to dinner at her house. He sent his daddy, Vernon, instead. So that made history, guys. Because he sent his daddy, Vernon, and Vernon ended up with her. In the family. I'm pushing play because again. Seemingly, Vernon was more or less the outsider of the family. You're telling us that Vernon reacted in a, in a violent and very, negative way? Very, very violent. Thinking yes. that he Elvis might have fathered a child. And of course, uh, to me, I found that most disturbing at the time. But at the time that this took place, I did not know all the facts that was later revealed to me about the love affair between Elvis and his mother. It is shocking. Oh my and gosh, this woman is so lying. But I ran oh out of the God. house. And my Vernon eyes are real watery violent, tonight. Drinking rage. Seriously, though, me, there's something course, totally wrong with this, and this woman. And I'm so surprised her fell. son's never said anything. So saying, that was my yeah, very, was first, very first, very first. No, she had the miscarriage. Well, something she cannot that prove. That, home. that it was a so-called dysfunctional home, right. you allege. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, now let's take a take us through the other sources. Alberta Holman. Alberta Holman. Yes. The long time. Lost time. Long time. Maid. Yes. Maid and yes. nanny at, at, at Graceland. At what did she tell you? Well, actually, when I first came to Graceland, there was much talk about the unusual closeness between Ellis and Gladys, and at that time, of course, I didn't know that it had been an unusual, unusual closeness. Unusual closeness. But seemingly, they would come to a point. About the closeness. And said it again. And someday, Mr. Vernon will tell you, she would say. Okay, so Alberta suggested said, something unnatural had, about had, the closeness? had taken place. Now, everyone knows, of course, that Elvis and his mom were And very Alberta close. is the lady that uh, Elvis, Elvis adored used to his refer mom to as Alberta um, 305 because of the, um, the hair products back in the day. Um, but I don't believe it. She died. She wasn't alive when this interview came out, guys. So, you know, it's so convenient that um, Dee tells this story and brings three people that passed on into this story to make it more credible, but it's not. They've gone. This is not a credible story. There's no proof to any of this. It's we actually have a clip, a brief clip of Elvis speaking of his adoration for his mom. It, it's just uh, 15 or 20 seconds. Let's, uh, let's roll that now back to Elvis in 1956. I suppose since I was an only child, that we might have been a little closer. And mother was always right with me all my life. A friend, a companion, someone to talk to. I could wake her up any hour of the night, and if I was worried or troubled about something, she'd get up and try to help me. Okay, now I have to say, Dee, that does not seem unnatural. He was an only child. I found nothing at all unnatural. That's the way that I myself felt. The very beginning of me questioning this relationship was when I was told that they shared the same bed until he was 16 no. or 17 years old. Now, Elvis slept, with literally his, slept literally in the same bed slept as mother. with his mother. When I questioned this, I was you told... You can see in the audience a lot of these people are not happy with what Dee has to say. Gladys comforted him. Of course, in the early years, 
three and four years old, I still saw that that was not well, really, lots of poor really a people problem. slept all together but in the same beds. It the doesn't make incest that nightmares, and that Elvis did sleepwalk. In fact, I'm going to pause this for really one second. Uh, my it father a had a bad back episode. when I was growing up, and my mother worked two jobs. So sometimes she would come into bed with me instead of my dad so she wouldn't disturb my father. And that happened until I was 17, off and on. Uh, that doesn't mean jack squat. It just means we shared a bed. She was my mom. Nothing went on. I don't understand why Dee is doing this. I guess maybe she was thinking that money, money, money was going to be the um, factor in this. but. Uh, what I found out after the fact of this video, she didn't make a dime. People just thought she was a whack job, and it continued until she died. I'm going to push play now. Sorry, guys, but uh, it gets me. She gets me. But the point, Geraldo, that I would really like to make clear that Elvis a was victim. a victim. Right, before, Young and before you get into the victimization and all the jargon of uh, of, of dysfunctional families, etc. Uh, what exactly, you're saying here Geraldo. is on a different plane, D. You're saying that Elvis Who slept in the same bed as his ass. mom. I was 17 when my mom was sleeping child. with me because so, she didn't want to disturb my dad. So what the heck aberrant, does that, that mean? Abnormal. At the age of 16 or 17? <sighs> well, that's a different like story. I had never heard that. One. Well, I have, and it was the truth. And who told you that? Mother Presley. Mother Presley? Elvis's grandmother. Alberta, the maid. She's saying Minnie May told her this, and Alberta 305 told her this. One of the problems, is that all three people have passed away. But why should I question? And Vernon himself. Why would Vernon say that? Exactly. All three people are dead. Near the end, he did. What did he say exactly? He told me. Vernon didn't tell you, Jack. Always the outcast, the outsider. That it was always Gladys and Elvis. The love was always between the two. And that he had lived throughout his life a lie. But did Vernon actually specifically say Sorry. to you that Gladys had sex with Elvis? Lovers. A they lie? were lovers. They slept in the same bed in the no. biblical sense. They were you lovers. You are. I think I met you in 1979 when you I was are doing a, a kind of an expose crazy. about Elvis's drug mm -hmm. problems. Uh, in 1979, you wrote a book. Also, mm -hmm. Elvis uh, Love Me Tender. Yes. Wasn't mm -hmm. that it? And you wrote it with the with your My boys. Th yes. Your, Elvis's mm -hmm. step brothers. Yes. Th Billy Ricky Rick and, and David. And David. Billy Rick right. and David. Oh, uh, play with there words. Was nothing his first movie. Like that in that book. No, Geraldo. I could not talk about it. If you noticed, I almost refused to talk about the drugs. Mm -hmm. It took me many years to ever speak about the drugs, the tragic. Just the fact they put Elvis's stepmother Elvis and there. there. And I refused to talk about it. But I felt like that this issue needs to be dealt with. And I think that after dealing with this, we'll have a better insight. Now, the Inquirer cover, and let me just introduce, sitting next to Dee is Mike Walker. He's been on the program before. You've seen him. He's the editor of the National Enquirer, the magazine, actually, that broke this shocking story. This is the first of a five-part series. And also joining us is uh, Luane Satterfield. She is the co-author of, uh, of this coming book. Uh, this the is book never came book, out, I guys. I'm what? just letting you know. Intimate Probably because it's so much oh, trash and garbage. Um, the, I, I told you before we went on the air, and I, I stated in front of this audience and in front of millions of people out there, that I'm not here to pick on you. Uh, you know, there'll be people coming, uh, Elvis... Uh, Elvis's uh, close friends and associates will be on this panel shortly, and uh, you'll have to deal with their wrath. Uh, but let me just play the devil's advocate for 30 seconds, and, and, and please don't, uh, don't take this as, uh, as disrespectful. Your main source, sources, uh, Elvis's grandmother, Elvis's father, and the longtime the maid inside. and nanny, yes. Alberta Holman, are all passed away. Uh, you wrote a book back in 1979. You made no mention of any of this aberrant behavior. Uh, isn't it possible now that you're doing this just to cash in on? There's not enough this money in the world, Geraldo. Salacious charge. That I would whatever. This story. No. And if it wasn't for money, you did it's, it out of spite because you couldn't stand Elvis because yes. he couldn't that stand Elvis, you. The king of rock and roll, the person yes. who we know was very, very troubled. To say that he was. He lived a troubled life. 
if this issue could have been dealt with 15 years ago, this would have been unheard of. It was taboo. But we're now at a time where this can be brought out and okay. talked about and discussed. Let me talk to uh, my uh, fellow reporter here, Mike Walker. Mike, you know I think that the National Enquirer gets a bad rap. I've said publicly, I will say a million times, I will say until hell freezes over, that I think you do at least as good a job as any of the mainstream news magazines in terms of accuracy. I think you get a bad rap, and I think it's easy to smear you because you're a supermarket tabloid. However, this kind of charge, as uncorroborated as any can possibly be, do you sit there confident that what you have printed is the truth? Well, people will always have a, a problem with this. We had the same reaction to this uh, that you're having. Um, and, of course, we were very cognizant of the fact that the three sources who could corroborate this are now gone, are passed away, and they're not here to, uh, to speak to this issue. On the other hand, uh, we, we looked for, as you always do in things like this, you look for the motive of the source, that's important, and we looked at uh, D. Presley, and and we said, well, you know, I mean, it, it isn't. It, we didn't think that it was strictly a money motivation. Uh, could be, of course, but we didn't think so. Also, D. Presley, and, and you'll forgive me for saying, I don't want to put her on her on her deathbed, but D. Presley is, uh, I believe, mm -hmm. sixty-seven now. D. Is that yes. correct? Yes, she's long dead now. And uh, at this point uh, in someone's life, I mean, people, uh, and again. <laughs> We hope you're going to be around for a great many years, but I'm just saying, as you approach, uh, you know, the end of your life, reporters often have the situation where people will come forward, and things prey on their minds, and they will they will talk to them. We also did what you always try to do in this case. We tried to check all the checkable facts. In other words, everything that was checkable. We tried to take D's story and kind of knock it down. Was what we tried to do as much as we could. I mean, obviously, we couldn't go to the central issue, and basically, we believe uh, that that D. Presley's story has been written. She wants to tell it. She's going to tell it somewhere. I mean, she certainly would have, I mean, the way things are going today, the Washington Post probably would have uh, excerpted this, uh, not just the National Enquirer. But we feel that we can see no clear reason why she would come forward and make such a shocking claim. The sh because she didn't care about Elvis. She was mad at him because she was choosing, because she had to choose Vernon because Elvis didn't want her. We all know that she made a ploy for Elvis first. So that started it. And then Elvis never liked her. So, spite. A shocking claim. She did the, it out of the, spite. The shock of it this alone is all out of hatred and spite. Almost tries to propel no you into the belief here, that, uh, that, There's that no love she must Elvis be telling here. the truth. I mean, why would she lie? She knows full well what she's uh, going to face from fans. My own wife, when she heard mm -mm -mm. this, said, this time you've gone too what far. What do you think? Um, is it yes? Burn the witch. It, yes. True. <laughs> False applause. Boo! Woo! All right, stop. Burn the witch. <laughs> if, I say, if I could say one other thing, um, first of all, Elvis Presley sleeping with his mother uh, was also reported in Albert Goldman's book. As far as I was always concerned, Albert Goldman's book said that Elvis was sleeping with his mother. I mean, it didn't quite say it, but the implication well, is very clear. Well, you could sleep with your mother uh, I have heard all that you want, before, but there's Elvis nothing going on. Mother, and I'm sorry, a boy sleeping with his mother until there was, he was 16 nothing going years old on. is bizarre and unnatural. Also, there were many lies surrounding Elvis Presley's life. I remember you years ago fighting, and I watched you on television many, many years ago, fighting against what you saw were facts coming out. You, you did not want to believe that Elvis Presley was on drugs at True. one point. True. I remember that. You, you really tried to deny that. It was, very See, it was really hard back in the 80s and the 90s, guys, because they were denying his uh, prescription drug use. Um, a lot of them were in denial, and they didn't believe that he was even doing prescription drugs. But at the end of the day, when the 2000s rolled in, um, everybody started to accept the fact that Elvis was taking prescription um, medications and a lot of it. Um, but with different books and things that came out, some of that is explained. But guys, I mean, this is just ridiculous that we have to watch this again. <laughs> I know it was my idea, but oh, I've forgotten how angry this makes me. Tough.
There were a lot of lies around Elvis's life. A lot of things about his sex life were brought out again in Goldman's book. So this is not totally and completely coming out of a vacuum. Let me show you a brief clip now of Vernon Presley, Dee's husband. Uh, when did Vernon pass away? 1979. 79, 79. so just 79. two years after, after. your divorce. Mm -hmm. uh, Vernon talking a little bit, just to give you an idea of the man toward the end of his life. This is Vernon talking about his divorce from Gladys and later marriage to Dee. Roll that, Jimbo. I uh, lived with him till my wife died in 1958, his mother, which we had uh, been married for 27 years. And, uh, and in 1958, he went to Germany in service. I went over there with him. And when we come back in 1960, I remarried. That's when I moved out of Graceland. And I mm -hmm. Because Elvis said, you ain't bringing that woman in my home. My mama's room is my mama's room. And Vernon never came back. The house on Dolan Drive was Vernon and Dee's house, but it wasn't the beginning. There was another house before that, but they didn't like it. Eventually, they got Dolan Drive, which is right behind Graceland. Um, but Elvis didn't go to the wedding. Elvis didn't want him living there, Vernon or his new bride. So. Um, yeah, uh, they didn't. But that shows you that Elvis was not happy with this un union. He was still trying to uh, grieve his mama. And Vernon and Dee were moving way too fast. And Elvis did not like it. I haven't lived in Graceland since then. Pushing play again. Okay, so again, we point out that Vernon and Dee nope. did not live at Graceland. What she is reporting is what she heard, and in a sense you're extrapolating from your own experience when his violent but, reaction. But just a minute, Harada, I did live at Graceland. And what years did you? 1960, I moved out before 62, bought our own home. I did not look forward to moving into Graceland. I found it very difficult. Was, so, was Elvis's mother's mm -hmm. room still sealed at that time? Yes. Everything no, she's a little jealous by her face. Her and, and the door was, locked? Yes. And I never went yeah, into the room you weren't worthy. until I had been there, after I'd come there sometime. Okay, you can tell us about that visit into Gladys's tomb, in a sense. Uh, we're going to be joined uh, by some people who you will recognize in, uh, in a couple of minutes to give the other side of the story. We're talking about the king's deepest, darkest secret. Mm -mm -mm. That's the focus of this edition of Feraldo. <laughs> Here we go. It was like a little commercial break or something. And um, there is Elvis um, doing his uh, Tupelo concert. So I muted it so the copyright wouldn't be on this channel. Now we're back to the show. Let's sing. Before I get to your question, I, I might have said that uh, Vernon divorced Gladys. Vernon didn't exactly, Gladys, Geraldo. Gladys, get it right, man. Gladys passed away. But I want to go back. Um, I'm going to quote from the Inquirer now before I introduce our esteemed uh, other guests. This is about the night that Dee uh, came home and uh, tells us that uh, she told Vernon that she was pregnant. This is Vernon's reaction. He grabbed Dee by the shoulders and shook her. He said, tell me, Dee, whose baby is it? Is it Elvis? Tell me now. Mm -hmm. I want to know if it's Look Elvis's baby. Look at her face. ranting and raving. You Vernon's tell mother, she mother presently appeared. Truth, she grabbed guys. Vernon and quieted them down with these startling Look. words. Uh, this is a quote from the Inquirer, sir. <laughs> Vernon, you sit down and shut up. If you don't, I'm going to tell Dee everything. Do you hear me? Everything. I will tell her all the deep, dark secrets of this family that you prayed she would never find out. I won't leave out one little detail. I'm going to tell her right this minute, right in front of you. If you don't sit down and shut up. That's the end of the quote attributed to Mother Presley. Uh, that's when Dee runs outside Convenient. and falls and has the miscarriage. Uh, okay, now after that, uh, Dee tells us that she and Mother Presley became closer. She told Dee that the reason Gladys began to abuse alcohol, or her well-known uh, alcohol problem, was because she missed Elvis so much. Gladys was so attached to him that she couldn't take the separation. Then, uh, then Mother Presley tells Dee, quote, until Elvis was in his teenage years, until he was way up in high school, they slept together most of the time, uh, 
she said. Uh, D asks, Mother, you mean Vernon and Gladys, don't you? No, honey, I mean Elvis and Gladys slept together, and I mean in a biblical sense. Those two had a close relationship. I mean real close. Mm -mm -mm. That's right. You lying cow. It's laid out. What do you think? What I want to know is, uh, Lee, did, oh, Priscilla, did, Pants did, Pants know? did Priscilla know what was going on, and did it continue during their marriage? During Priscilla's and Elvis' marriage? Oh, Gladys died in 1958. Did Priscilla She's know anything? Sure. I'm not sure. I want to know, if you're not doing it for the money or the publicity, why... Yeah, why even bother? Why? I think <laughs> the truth should be known. Let me look at this. I'd love to hear this. Yes, Go, J.D. Sumner! That gentleman... Tell him! Tell him! ...is the esteemed country yeah. music star. That's J.D. Souther right there. He is Souther, uh, rather. Uh, Sumner, really Sumner, Sumner J.D. Sumner. J.D. and yeah, Elvis JD. were best friends since yeah. Elvis was 14. J.D. Sumner. J.D. is JD. a well-known uh, uh, singer. Lie, and uh, No. Everybody knows the truth. Sitting next no, to him, Joe you're Esposito. The, you're, you're the only one that lived a lie. Everyone no, I'm not hurting you. Joe Esposito's a close friend and confidant of Elvis. J.D. Sumner, best friend since early on. Why would you not deny if you ever heard of this, J.D.? We're not talking about drugs. We're talking about your Popeye's lie about him clicking in the moment. We're talking about drugs. We're talking about you're saying he's doing stuff with his mama. He did stuff with his mama, you witch. <laughs> right, right. Go, J.D. How, how, how can you sit there in America watching you and tell yeah, such a blooming lie? How can you sit there and do that? How can you sit there and let him die with the drugs and not realize. I knew him long before you did. You probably did. I was sung at his mother's funeral. I attended church with his mama and him. Yep. And you sure are is. lying, lady. I was you told have repeated by, a lie. I was told You're by. You're lying. How do we know? I was told by. Let, let, wait a minute. Joe Esposito. All, I would love. Joe Esposito. Geraldo, I would love to. <laughs> when I got the phone call about Monday about this article, you have no idea how upset I am as of today. You had a no Elvis Presley, and I'm surprised that she is really doing this. I never thought she would do this. She is sitting here making this story up in the first place. You know, uh, if we had a lie detector test, that's yeah. what I'd really like to see her do. Let's right do in that. Front of us. She, uh, uh, I was mm. told by her own sons, which I talked to yesterday, her own son, Ricky and David, they think she's her out of her mind. Her own kids think she's her out own of her kids. mind. Now, I was told I don't, by them, that she got $100,000 from the National Enquirer for this five story. Now, ask her. Ask him. He'll tell you. She has no publisher for the book, as I was told. He is And I think she's doing it for a publishing deal. She's broke. Her own boys told me she's broke. And she's doing it for money. What other reason is to do this? What would, what would this help? It doesn't help gonna help anybody if Elvis slept with his mother? Even, even if it were so, even if the first nth degree was so, which it is not, it would take a low down person yep. to That's reveal right, J.D. Stuff. You tell. And now I okay, hold you two. Cool, 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 cool. I'm really mad. I'm cool. sorry. I know. That's okay. We've got plenty of show. Okay. Mike, you want to respond before we go to commercial? Yes. Well, as to uh, did we pay D. Presley uh, money, yes, we did. Uh, there was syndication rights involved. We did not pay her a hundred thousand uh, dollars. But as to the the we question, we didn't pay her anything. As as to the question of uh, is she lying or is she not, I would simply like to ask, outside of the fact that uh, both of these gentlemen, like my own wife, uh, did not want to hear this charge, but how do they know that it is not true? Other than saying that Elvis Presley was not the kind of person who would do this, and why would she say that? Okay, let me ask you this. She says Vernon told her, mm -hmm. Alberta the maid told her, right. and Elvis's grandmother. And, and tell, first of all, Vernon, an outcast in his family, Vernon and Elvis had the greatest relationship in the world. Elvis loved Vernon, and he told us many times, only reason I put up with mm -hmm. Dee Presley is because she's married to my mm -hmm. father. Quote by him. He said he never was thrilled with Dee. She came after him because she wanted him. And he said, I'll put up with as long as she's around, but she'll never take my mother's place, and I'll never call her what mother. Do you mean, what do you mean she came after him? What are you, what are you talking well, about? Well, okay. She was married in Germany mm -hmm. at the time to a sergeant in the you army. You tell him, when Jeff. Vernon married her. 
Which Vernon she, met her. Which she tried to seduce she, Vernon to leave her husband. Mm -hmm. He did. He was married then. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, she left him. Yeah. yeah. You got yeah. skeletons in your closet, honey. What? She left him for Vernon. <laughs> Take a break. <laughs> Go, guys. You tell her off. Really, there's something wrong with this woman. The Lulu crazy. Okay. Now I'm well, going to fast like to forward a little clear, bit. This book has been in the works for over two years. Footage we don't this need is to see. a small incident in the book. The book was not designed to assassinate. Yeah, Iverson it's assassination anyway. of his character, guys. It has been Dee's story, her love story with Vernon, and the story of her three sons going from drugs back to the ministry. Uh, it's filled with a lot it's of faith. Filled it's filled with a lot of lies. Of it's filled with a lot of God. These things came out as she was going through a catharsis. I've worked with her for 24 months, and I have seen her grow and come out, so I have no reason to doubt. There were many worse There's things. There's many that worse she things she could have put in there. Put in there. Oh my that. God. That she said what no. was it? Her, 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 just like, That's crazy, though. There's a lot of other stuff she wasn't going to put in that book. Granted, her book never came out, but there was more stuff she was going to put in it. Worse stuff? I say that uh, I think it, take, Lord, it took a lot of courage for Dee to come out and make an accusation like glad this. Glad it didn't come out. And I think that, no, I, I think that uh, she, she's going to face a lot of personal abuse and just outright hostility for this. And no amount of money is worth what she has, is going to have to go through. That's not true. That's, 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 not, true. Well, that's not true when you don't have any money. You Joe, gotta eat. That's not true. You don't do this from. You don't make this kind of a a, a book for for take courage. It's to make yep. money. She's claiming he's gay in the damn yes, book. Yes, she claims he's gay in she the damn he book. He had gay. He, he was gay. I haven't read the whole book. So he I don't was know not. He, he loves females. Historical figure. He was, this was, was all already a someone that we studied. We campaign, look at. We just she dug couldn't up Zachary stand, Taylor no. for God's sake to see if he, anybody had assassinated him during his tenure as president. I mean, the same thing is going to happen if this charge is not true then it won't stand the test of time and history. Yeah. On the other hand, it is part of history. Everything else has been dug up about Elvis. If this isn't true, that will come out. It this isn't is part true. Of history and it would explain it already all the dysfunction did come out. and how we ended up it was the a lie. You, you, mentioned, you mentioned that Goldman had written something similar to the same thing. Goldman book is a lie. I, I, I was involved in Goldman. He even took some statements I made and made a lie. Yeah, he took, he took stuff the that they said and he twisted lie. There's it. No gray area when you did. call a man a homosexual yep. and when you say a man sleeps with his mother, mm -hmm. I just wonder that Judith portrayed Jesus Christ and got 30 pieces of silver. J.D., well, did, did, did Elvis, did Elvis sleep with his mother? Did Elvis, I'm getting back did Elvis back sleep with his mother, point, though, in, I slept in, with my mother in a too. bed? No, no, until he was 16 and 17. John. I mean, Joe, I sorry. That's funny. I slept with my mother, too. Yeah, ask Dee a question. Did Vernon say when Elvis slept with Gladys that he slept with her till, she was, till he was 16 or 17? He said those specific words? Joe? I'm asking you. Yes. He said he, said he slept with her till she was 16 they, and 17 years yes, old. Yes, and she was his... They were love... They were making... They were so they were lovers. They had sex. They were lovers. They had sex, that you're trying to say. This had happened. Listen, Joe. I don't those believe that Burnham was a kind of man to have mm -hmm. lived in that environment. Mm -hmm. I love my mother, too. The story is that Gladys herself, listen, please, to the story, was from an incestuous family. Well, now, I did not. If you really want to get into that... No, no. Forget really, about that. come on. Dee, what I'm trying to say is this, Dee. Yes, were, yes. Was Vernon in the room? When you say they were yes. lovers, Vernon saw them... They were in the bed, and then Vernon knew that there oh. was this liar. Look, you're saying Vernon what? I can't believe Vernon take would say that. Take a break. Take a break. Go. Pull uh. cool him down. Every clip just builds the impression of She's such a big once guy. in a lifetime. Yes, good. <clears throat> I would like to know how come Vernon thought that Elvis was the father of your child. Are you sure it wasn't the stepmother that was sleeping with him? I have never... <laughs> now, I mean, J.D., you alluded to, you allege that D flirted with Elvis? That he, that what? That D flirted with Elvis in oh. Germany? No, I, I said that she was living with her first husband, Mr. Stanley, which I wish she'd go back using that name. 
she was living with him when she went after Vernon, and going after Vernon, she was after Elvis. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just say one thing. And Elvis didn't Number want one, your ass. You, as Mrs. Stanley you were too old you don't deserve for him. to have the Presley name. If, thank you. If Stanley, if Stanley was written on that book, it wouldn't sell. Number one, this book isn't going to sell. Because remember, your brass, brass can tarnish. You'll never tarnish gold. Remember that. All right. It calls you brass, honey. Because Elvis is gold. What I'd like to know is, on the cover, it says forbidden love led to uh, her death. Uh, are you trying to insinuate that this guilt killed her? I don't understand that at all. Gladys yes. also felt the guilt. Mm. But Gladys was also uh, an innocent victim. An innocent victim at an early age. Wait a second. You're not giving her a chance. Please, if you'll Give sit down. Elvis. I mean, I'm sorry, Gladys also had the problem of drinking and the diet pills. So the mixture, she could not deal with the guilt. But that's your theory, right, Dee? You don't know that for a fact. I was told, why should I distrust the people Here's that told me? and I think you made it it's all It's the truth, Geraldo. It was told to me as truth, and I have uh, no told doubt. Told you as to, truth? No doubt in my mind. She made it up, guys. Dee, between you and your... <laughs> Shit up. See, between you and your sons, this is the fifth book that has been written by your family. When's it going to end? I have it's not the wrote fifth book. one. Yeah. You wrote one, Elvis, We Love You Tender, and each of your sons wrote their own book, and this is the fifth. You know, come on, the well's got to run dry sooner or later. Well, the now the truth, for the first time, the truth has been dealt with. What, the other ones were lies? No, it this isn't. This is for J.D. You're a liar. Um, you did this in spite of Elvis. My understanding is you were friends with Elvis when he, you were young? How young? No, not really. No, no, no JD. for JD. Oh. When he was 14 years old. Well, if you were a 14-year-old, when you were 14, not if me. your mother was abusing you or sleeping with you, having incest with you, would you go and tell Elvis that? It's an embarrassing situation for Elvis. I'm not saying it was true. If it was or if it wasn't, I'm giving her the benefit of the doubt. Oh, you shouldn't but give her the benefit of the doubt, honey. You. She don't You'd deserve be telling it. Your friends, she didn't deserve it. If, if I... If this had happened to me, that I was sleeping with my mother, yes. well, I, my, my mind can't go there. <laughs> but when, when Elvis was 14 years old, he couldn't conceive of this I, I either. I knew Gladys. She did not know Gladys. I went to church with Gladys. I sang at Gladys's funeral. We were supposed to sing three songs. They were a very religious family. They had a glass covering over her coffin. Elvis laid over her coffin and said, Mama, I'd give everything I got in the world and dig ditches the rest of my life just to bring you back for five minutes. And then for somebody to come up here and tell a blasted, blooming, confounded lie like that is sickening and disgusting. And every time... She is Tempering. sickening and disgusting. Talking garbage. So this is like a quick commercial break on this end. Now they're back. Elvis Uncensored is what the Enquirer calls it. It is Dee Presley's shocking allegation of incest in the Presley home. Uh, Jan White Whitez is an expert. She's the author of Healing Your Sexual Self. She's an expert in the field of mother-son relationships. By bringing on an expert, we don't uh, in any way give additional credence to really her all though why would you even bring say, an expert stand up again, young lady? it's not real Sorry. he didn't do it she, she, she didn't do it let's, there let's was no sexual relations with his mama the charge if in fact the charge was true who would speak about it isn't that jan in fact and again the fact that there's an expert on incest or relationships doesn't mean that we give any credence to it except to say jan aren't they always the deepest darkest secret yeah, and I'm surprised that so many people would know about it because treating families where incest is involved is so difficult because the only people that really know what's going on are the people involved themselves, and they don't talk about it. Okay, now you make, a, you make what ironically may be the most damning charge of all. Do you say that by saying that the maid knew about it, the husband knew about it, and the, the grandma knew about it, that's unlikely? I think it's real peculiar. I think the relationship that he had with his mother 
was very enmeshed and probably made it difficult for him to find other women as desirable as she. But I'd be very surprised that this information would go around a family. The tightness, yes. Even if it's true that, that they were, even if it were true that they were sleeping together in the same bed, not necessarily having sexual intercourse, even then would you find it strange if everybody knew this was going on? These behaviors are generally kept so close that that's what makes it so hard for but them to this make treat. You think of it if you saw that I kind would of behavior. Think would you not be suspicious of an expert if you saw a teenage boy sleeping with his mother in the same I bed? I would think that the relationship he had with his mother was a little bit too close mm -hmm. to be usual. Yes. These charges okay. are a little bit more extreme oh, of course. than we usually hear. Mm -hmm. So but it might be an indication. We never know. We can't really tell. We you know you don't want to venture a guess, do you, Jan? I, I have no way of knowing, but it just doesn't, it isn't even necessary or relevant. We know that there was a very intimate relationship. We know that he was troubled. We know that there was alcohol in the family, and he behaved as the adult child of an alcoholic would. So these details uh, don't really have a lot of meaning, except uh, to... Uh, to bring out things that don't make necessarily any sense. It's not the kind of conversation that people tell people about. In your uh, capacity exactly. as an expert, you find so that it's all charges anyway. like this are often brought falsely by other members of the family. Is that a normal thing? It happens and it doesn't happen. It depends on what their motive is. I mean, if there's a hundred grand at stake, though, I think it would probably be more Yeah, a hundred grand you know? at stake, oh, that's your on. motive I didn't, right I didn't there. do that. I don't want this Geraldo. to be like a dance meeting. First Hold on, let me introduce two other people. Okay. Bill Burke met Elvis in 57, continued a relationship, we're told, until his death. He's written 400 articles on Elvis, three books. He's the editor of Elvis World. It's a magazine sitting next to him. Uh, Janelle McComb, she's known Elvis the longest. She's known him since Tupelo, since uh, he was two years old. Uh, you're very upset, aren't you, Janelle? You know? I can't hear very well. Are you very upset at this charge? Are you very upset, honey? Are you are, upset? Are you, are you very oh, she need a hearing aid, poor girl. Oh, I, I just can't. I've known Elvis Presley since I was two years old. The poor same girl. doctor that delivered him delivered my brother and sister. Mm. We went out on the third night he was born. I was in that house until they left Tupelo. Uh, they lived on Kelly, Adams, and Barry, 1010 North Green when they left. Uh, when we're talking about a depression, Geraldo, you're not talking about an indention in somebody's thing. You're talking about people who don't have enough to eat, enough beds. Uh, my brother slept with We have a picture, actually. I would really house. like you to answer right, the question, Miss McComb, though. He asked you a question, um, and you're telling exactly him your life right. story. And if it wasn't for Can those two rooms, there wouldn't be yeah. a soul here today. I want you to say mean, that again. Your brother <laughs> slept with your... My brother slept with my mother because there you we go. didn't have enough to eat when the Depression came. And I slept on a pallet, and so did my dad on the other side. Uh, there was nothing incestuous about this. And, uh, you slept where you, you had to sleep. There wasn't it, enough room. Um, you look back when Christ was on the cross, who did he think about in the end? Behold thy mother, my mother, take care of my mother. That goes, that's biblical. Uh, I'm a boy mom. A boy mama's attack. Uh, and if my son, I'm right a boy now, mama age of 46, too. needed me, if he needed me and there was no beds and there was, mm -hmm. he needed me to comfort him, if he needed me in any way, he's little to me. Boy and mamas are special, that. I think. I think little boys love their mama more than, than, than girls do until the girls get older. But you're a sweet lady, Miss McComb. But she needed a hearing aid, poor dad. Come on, I know you're a big Elvis fan. You're here just to love the guy, right? I, I was never an Elvis fan, quote. I was an Elvis friend. And Aww. I knew the man for 20 years, and uh, I've written quite a bit about him. In the research on the book I did on the Humes years, which is the high school years, which puts us into D's teenage uh, accusations here, uh, no one that uh, were Elvis's closest friends around the Humes high school years, they said this thing about Elvis sleeping with Gladys. They never saw this, and they stayed over at the house a lot, and they never saw this. And they, they, just, they just can't believe it. So you're this. saying that you've, you have eyewitnesses in the house that the, say that they didn't during sleep. During the high school years that they never slept together. Also, so that would in, be 14, 15. In, right. And also in the story this printed very quickly. Quick, I've got to take okay, a break, please. In the story this printed, uh, Dee says that she ran outside the house and fell down and Anita Wood picked her up 
and that's when she had the miscarriage, not because Anita picked her up, but I talked to Anita last night, and Anita has no recollection of this whatsoever. I never knew she because it didn't Anita. happen. She put Anita what in her story? Boy, she was an idiot. I want to briefly uh, mention three quick semi-commercial announcements. Number one, the highly controversial Inquirer series, part two of five uh, next week and et cetera for the next, I guess, four weeks. Uh, so that's the Inquirer on, on sale in your supermarket uh, or wherever else. Uh, J.D. Sumner has a new uh, CD out, uh, Peace in the Valley, is it, J.D.? Yeah, I, I record with the Benson Company on the River Song label and uh, still doing a lot of dates. And You're our new CD devil. is Peace in the Valley. That's it. And, and you know, Joe Esposito's never written a book. Uh, as a matter of fact, Joe uh, has been. He didn't, but his ex girlfriend, Elvis Defender, right? Shirley Pay Your Dues, did. Until he was drag kicking and screaming. So I, I, I say he is finally now writing a book. It's uh, Elvis and the Memphis Mafia, which. Oh, yeah, he so did write that, that book. This will be a chapter. And this will be a chapter. Yeah. Uh -huh. The question that I wanted to ask was, or I actually wanted to make a statement about Gladys Presley. Everyone knows if they followed the tabloids years ago that she had a very bad heart. Isn't it possible that Elvis slept with her to give her her medication because he loved his mother so? Dee, I'm going to let you talk for the next minute. That's all I have in the segment. Well, <clears throat> at the age of 17, 16 or 17, there again, I would rather think this strange and unusual. I am only there again, unusual. telling what was told to me by three people that I have no cause to I'm only doubt. making up this lie I because like I want $100,000 and I can't Vernon, stand the Presley family. It troubled family. the entire family. Okay, Dee, I want you to look right here. Here's the family right here. Now, Chris is still mm. All right, now, Dee, tell them that you want, tell them you want them to believe you. I want them to believe it because it is a truth. I want them to also, the point that I'm trying to get across, that Elvis was an innocent victim. Vernon was a victim, mm. and Gladys mm. was a victim. This subject was never mentioned, could not be discussed. And Vernon being the closest, Vernon was the closest one to me, Joe, pardon me, the most intimate relationship, and he okay. shared. J.D., you got 20 seconds. They're, they're the American people. If you, think, if you don't think anything of your own family and your own boys, which you, you have made sick, you have almost ruined your son's ministry, which he's a good kid. Wow. What about Lisa Marie? Did you ever love her? Wow. Let's get back to Did the... Did you ever have any feeling for Lisa let's, Marie? I loved, I loved all of them. But, J.D., let's take it back. My sons have lived... No, 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 no. The point, J.D., nobody lived. Everybody around Elvis lived a lie. I have been as everybody, sorry as you can get. I have been sorry, too, about the situation you I have you still felt. doing a good job. Well... <laughs> You're doing a good job. My, oh my. My, oh my. She was trying to weave a web of deceit and lies, but it didn't work. like a ending. It's just like maybe a minute left. Thanks, everybody. Sorry, uh, I've got 25 seconds left. All I want to do and uh, all there is time for without any further editorializing is to thank our guests for coming on. Starting uh, with you, Janelle, thank you. I know you love the king. Bill is old high school uh, chum. Joe, uh, forever there for Elvis J.D., uh, what a man. Uh, Mike Walker, the skilled editor of The Inquirer. D, uh, you've said it, the cat's out of the bag. You have to live with it now. And you got to live with it now, and you're going to die with it, honey. Lord of mercy. Well, long live Elvis, but... Long live his legacy. She almost ruined it. I'm so glad nobody listened to her bullshit when it came out. I'm so very, very glad. Because that was nothing but lies, guys. 
It was nothing but lies on top of lies on top of lies. And I'm so glad her book never came out. And as far as um, all the players on that stage goes, I'm so happy that JD and Joe Esposito um, were on to uh, defend a man that couldn't defend himself because he wasn't here no more. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I know I did. Let me know in the comment section below if you want us to do any more reaction videos. And if this does good, I might add this to the member um, video list once I, I, I do the membership, guys. I haven't done it yet, but I will eventually. Um, but I had fun, and I also was mad, you know. But uh, she ain't nothing but a piece of crap, guys. She died pen penniless. Uh, her son's mediocre at best. Uh, I told you I don't trust the Stanley far enough to throw one, guys. They've lied throughout their whole time on this earth about Elvis and Karma's bitch. <laughs> well, guys, you could have went to any Elvis channel tonight, but you didn't. You came to mine, and for that, I love y'all very much for it. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. If you like what you see, please subscribe and like this for the algorithm. And guys, um, I will be with you guys next week, okay? TCBTLC. God bless you all. And you know what? I'll see you on the other side. Bye, everybody. Love y'all. Be safe out there. Telling you straight up, can't stand that woman. Something's wrong with her. We're going, ugh, bye now.